My name is Saj, I'm the director at New Slate Films. It's a Chicago-based video production company and I wanted to take a few minutes to show you the tools I use the most in most of my video production, which is the 5D Mark II and the 5D Mark III. I've used DSLR cameras since 2008-2009 for the majority of my video production. So I just wanted to do a quick overview between the 5D Mark II and the 5D Mark III and how you would get them operational to do basic video. If you find this overview useful but you have more questions, please visit me at newslatefilms.com or you could visit us at facebook.com slash newslatefilms for more of these videos and you could email me anytime with any question you have on these videos and I'll try to get back to you. Let's talk about basic operations. One is when you turn on the camera, you want it to get it ready for video mode. How do you do that? Well, for the Mark II, the button is right here. You basically press it and it takes you to video mode. For the Mark III, it's a little different. It's here and it's a switch. It's not something you press, it's something you toggle back and forth. Another setting is make sure you're on manual mode. You could be on the other modes like the AV mode or the program mode, but I recommend being manual mode. As a professional that's using these cameras to create videos, I get a lot more control with the manual setting. So pretty much everything I do with these cameras, I'm on manual settings. After you put these cameras in video mode, you wanna choose your frame rate and you wanna choose the resolution that these videos are recording in. So on the Mark II, you go to the menu and you choose the live view movie function setting. Once you're there, you go down to the movie record size and choose the one you need. In this case, I'm on 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames. There are two other options there, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames and 640 by 480 at 30 frames. I choose 24 because 24 gives me 24 frames per second. That's what movies are shot in, 24 frames per second. It looks the most cinematic. In the Mark III, go to the movie record size and you see many more options here. Remember the Mark II only had three options, but now you have a lot more options. Now, here again, I choose 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames, but you have two different versions of that, the All-Eye or the IPB. I choose the All-Eye. Why? It gives you better quality and more information than the IPB. The IPB is smaller in file size, so if you're trying to reserve card size, use that, but in my case, I use the All-Eye. Now you have to expose for your image. What do you have to do for that? Well, you have three things that you have to do for that. You have to set your shutter, then you have to set your ISO, and then you have to choose your f-stop. Those three things give you the exposure of your image. Now, these two cameras and any DSLR camera basically follow the same rules. So as long as you know these rules for those three settings, you should be set to work with any DSLR camera in this video mode. Let's begin with your shutter setting. Now, your shutter setting by rule of thumb should be double your frame rate. So we chose the frame rate at 24. Double that is 48. So this camera closest to that would be 50th of a second. So choose your shutter at 50th of a second. If you choose 30 frames, be yes, at 60th of a second. That's usually just the rule of thumb when it comes to video. So whatever frame rate you choose, your shutter is double that. When it comes to your ISO though, these two cameras give me different results and I've noticed that in my testing and just doing jobs. So with the 5D Mark II, I like to stay between the 200 and 1000 range. Okay, if I'm indoors and I need more light and you know ISO 1000 doesn't give me enough light, I'll go higher, I'll go to 1600, but I won't really push it further than that because it would just be too grainy. I'll use a light source. In the 5D Mark III, however, I have pushed the ISO to 4000 and I had a usable image. So I really like the settings that it allows you to have with the high ISO. But again, on the low end, I'm at 200. At the high end, I go to, you know, 3200. If I have to push it to 4000, test it out and see if you like the image. Next is your f-stop setting. Now, for f-stop, it all depends on your lens and what lens you have on these cameras. For example, on the Mark II, I have a 2.8 lens, meaning the f-stop goes as low as 2.8. On the Mark III, I have a f4. But prime lenses that don't zoom could go down to like a 1.2. Canon makes great 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. And I like to use those sometimes and shoot at really low f-stops. 
Now, f-stop is just a creative decision for the most part. If you have a lot of control over the light, it's a creative decision. So if you're outdoors, you could be at f-stop f22 or f1.2. It's your choice, really, what you want to do with that. So in most cases, I like to be at a lower f-stop, at a 2.8, for example, when I'm doing things like this, when the subject's not moving around. Outdoors, I go to f8, f11. Why? Because the lower the f-stop, the harder to keep the subject in focus. So keep that in mind. And if your subject's moving around a lot, kick up your f-stop because at a lower f-stop, you're going to have a really hard time keeping them in focus. So now between those three settings, you should have enough information to pick the exposure that looks good, that gives you the best depth of field that you're going after and keeping your subject in focus at the same time. So now let's just jump right into focus. So in these cameras, you have to be in manual focus. Now this is a big surprise, especially to photographers that are used to using autofocus. The AF and the MF setting on the lens, when you're shooting video, needs to be on MF, manual focus. And you need to use the focus ring just like you use the zoom ring to set your focus. Now, sometimes the subject's moving. That means you have to manually track focus with them. If they go closer to you or further away, you have to move that ring to keep track of focus and when they're moving to. It's difficult, I know. It's one of the hardest things about these cameras with the big sensor and the shallow depth of field is hard to keep those subjects in focus. Again, that's why I talk about your f-stop settings. If they're moving out a lot, try to have a higher f-stop. Try to be at an f8 so it's not that big of a deal. If they go in and out of focus, it's not that noticeable. At an f2.8, it's very noticeable. It's going to be impossible to keep them in focus when they're running around. I usually get a professional assigned to me and their job is pulling focus. They're called focus pullers. And when I use these cameras, that's all they do. And I also have fancy accessories just to help me keep things in focus. Because remember, there is no autofocus on these cameras, the 5D Mark II and the Mark III. There is no autofocus for video. There is a ton of options for autofocus when it comes to photography, but none for video. So you got to keep it on manual setting. Next, let's talk about lens selection. Again, I love zoom lenses. They give me a lot of uh, flexibility when I'm on the shoot. And I wanted to just talk about the three that I use on every kit, on every shoot. The 16 to 35 is a really wide lens. It's a 2.8 lens and it allows me to get big structures. I use it in resort videos. I use it in interiors of big buildings, factories. It's a great lens and you should have it for video if you have shots that show a lot of space and you want the widest lens you can have. Next is my go-to lens. My go-to lens is the 24 to 105. Now, a lot of photographers, for example, I've noticed have the 24 to 70. That's a 2.8 lens. The 24 to 105 is not, it's an F4 lens. But why do I like it more than the F2.8 lens? Because it has an IS setting built in. The IS setting stabilizes the image for me and it's a great tool. I could do shots handheld and make them look like I was on a tripod. Without the IS, I will not be able to do this. This is a great go-to lens just to get my run and gun shots. And probably my favorite lens, only because I do a lot, a lot of sit-down interviews, is a, is a 70 to 200 f2.8 IS. Again, it has the IS setting built in. So even if you're concerned with the budget, because I know this is an expensive lens, get the f4, but make sure it has the IS built in. Don't skimp on the IS. There's the color balance and the picture style in the settings of the camera that are pretty much the same between the Mark II and the Mark III. So make sure you choose the right color balance and make sure you choose a picture style you like. For example, if you're outdoors, you want your color balance to be at 5600 or the daylight icon. Or if you're indoors, you want it to be at a tungsten setting, which is the light bulb setting indoors. As far as picture style goes, I won't go into it too much. There's a lot to cover here, but it's a creative choice. So kind of play around here and see what you like, what images look good to you. I kind of like to uh, boost up the saturation and get really vivid colors. Now you're pretty much ready to shoot. I gave you all the settings that you need to just to basically get going. Just make sure you have plenty of batteries on hand. These batteries go pretty quickly when it comes to shooting video and your display is going all the time. So it's not like photography where you're just taking pictures here and there and your battery could last you for hours. These batteries, you know, sometimes they last 
maybe 45 minutes to an hour when you're shooting constant video. As far as audio goes, the Mark II and the Mark III have different audio settings and the Mark III has really improved on the Mark II, not just in audio, but a lot of issues like Moray and aliasing. But make sure that uh, you check out the video on, on audio if you intend to use these cameras to record audio. Again, if you have any questions, please visit me at uh, newslatefilms.com uh, for more videos and uh, at facebook.com slash newslatefilms. Leave us a message and we'll get back to you with any questions you may have as far as settings on these cameras and uh, also on the 7D and the 60D as well.